The Boston Celtics, though, they struggled in their last game on Saturday in a finals rematch against the Warriors. Steph and Clay combined for 66 points in that 123-107 win. Jason Tatum was held to 18 points on 21 shots. So we talked about, you know, one premier fan franchise. Let's switch things over, Perk. How surprising was Tatum's performance in this one for you? You know what? It's, it's one thing to have a bad shoot night. Everybody goes through that. But to not have it on your mind to come out here and just be pure dominant without Andrew Wiggins being on the floor from Jason Tatum talking about how miserable his offseason was because the way he performed in the finals to him actually going to a postgame interview and saying this game was more meaningful to the fans and the media than it was to him. It, it made my skin crawl because it's like, no, like these are the games that matters the most. These are the games that you need to put behind you. Like, because the narrative is always going to be until he played Golden State again this season is that no matter what else he does, they're going to say, oh, you don't do that against Golden State. And you want to get that monkey off your back. And I was just expecting more out of him from just all aspects of the game. And he didn't deliver. Well, during the finals, what did we talk about with Jason Tatum? He had trouble finishing at the rim. The Warriors had a scheme, and they sent multiple defenders at him, made it very difficult for him to finish. Mm -hmm. They did the same thing again in this one. Now, Jason spent all summer working on finishing at the rim, finishing through contact. He's improved tremendously in that department. But against the team that did that to him in the finals, he had a tough night again. And this is without Andrew Wiggins. So this is a throwback Clay Thompson defensive performance, but also the way the Warriors defend Jason Tatum is being studied by every team in the league that has had a hard time stopping him this year. You better believe they will be employing a lot of the same techniques that Golden State has had success with in stopping Tatum. Yeah, and I think for some Celtics fans, they're going to be like, wait until we're full strength. So, whoa, the Celtics are back in L.A. They're in L.A. for a back-to-back, -back, starting with the Clippers tonight. What is the latest on Robert Williams' attempt to return to the floor for Boston? Well, Chene, uh, Robert Williams is out tonight against the Clippers. Uh, you know, we'll see tomorrow with the Lakers. I think they are essentially waiting for Robert Williams at this point, I think, to, to wake up one morning and say, I'm ready to go. He's cleared to play. You know, if you saw some of the clips of him in practice, catching lob dunks, you know, he's playing five on five. He's yep. playing pain free. Uh, but, you know, he's still coming off of that offseason knee surgery. And if it's not tomorrow against the Lakers, yep. then Boston is back home Friday against Orlando. And you start to count. I think the countdown continues then. But th there's no rush to get Robert Williams back when he's ready mentally. He'll be back, and, you know, they've been without Al Horford, who's been in protocol here for the last couple days. But this is a deep Boston team, and you've seen even without Robert Williams, yeah. their starting center, they've been uh, they've been the best team in the league since the start of the season. He didn't have to prove anything. Yeah. He pushed himself last year. Yep. And this was one Come key back. loss. If you think about it, the entire Celtics season has bought him a tremendous amount of time, so there's no pressure there. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.